Hello and welcome back to the channel. My name is Vic and today we're going to continue with our Inkscape tutorial series. Inkscape is a free and open source vector graphic editor that's available for Linux, Mac and Windows. I've loaded up a new document here in Inkscape and just to check for this tutorial, we are using Inkscape version 1.1, which is the latest version as of making this tutorial. In today's video, I'm going to show you the basics of fill and stroke, which is basically the fill is the color of the inside of the object and the stroke is the color of the outlines of the object. So this is my page here. For the sake of this tutorial, I'm just going to move that aside so we've got a nice blank screen here to work with. Now let's get started and let's draw a basic rectangle here. Let's go ahead and change the fill at the moment. And by the way, if you're having trouble with seeing white over white, uh, you see that I have a checkerboard background here. You can change it in the document properties. So let's go to our document properties, file, document properties, or control shift D and make sure you check the checkerboard background so that you can see white objects clearly. I'm going to click on my select tool here so that we're going to work with our rectangle. So one of the ways to change the fill is through this color palette down here. So let's say we want to change it into this fuchsia color. I'm going to go ahead and click that. You can see it changes it to fuchsia. Now, if I hold down the shift key, it's going to change the stroke color. So as you can see here, the fill is that fuchsia color and then the stroke is none. So there's no stroke. There's no outline at the moment. So let's hold down the shift key and click on black. And as you can see, if we zoom in here, we've got a black outline now. If you wanted a little bit more control of the fill and stroke, we can use the fill and stroke toolbar to do some more changes. So fill and stroke toolbar here, click it or control shift F. We'll go to the fill tab and we've got a few more options here. So we could change the color to a little bit more on a manual level using this color wheel. We've got some RGB options. So slider to help you HSL. If you prefer that, HSV, CMYK, wheel, and then CMS. Typically, the wheel is enough for me to make the changes that I need. You can even enter a hexadecimal value for the color here. So if you've got a hexadecimal code, you can enter it over here. Sometimes if it doesn't work properly, just make sure to type in an FF at the end. Another cool thing that we can do is we could use a color picker. So we could pick a color from somewhere. We don't have an image at the moment, but let's uh, let's actually do this exercise. So let me import an image. So I've imported an image here and it's quite huge. So what I'm going to do is going to resize this down just so that we could see it a little bit better. So let's go back to that again. So Let's click on our square here and let's try to pick a color. So I'm using the color picker tool here and let's say I want to change it to match like this light blue. So color pick, click on that and you can see it matches to that color. Again, if we use a different color like this gray here and you can see a little tooltip change as well. So we can click that and we've got it to the gray. So let's just switch that back to the blue. You can also do the same thing for your stroke. So if you want to pick the same color exactly from the image. So there you go. So the stroke now matches the fill. Let's undo that. And as you can see here, the code is different from what we had before, because now this is the hexadecimal code for this type of blue. Another thing that you could change while we're here as well is the alpha, which is the transparency. So you could reduce the transparency so you can see a bit more of the background. Another place that you could change and play around with for transparency is the opacity over here. So it sort of achieves the same thing, but depending on how your objects are composed, the alpha and the opacity will have a slightly different effect. Uh, we've got some blur options here as well, which allows us to blur a little bit of that 
fill. You can achieve the same thing, obviously, with your stroke paint. The other thing that I want to show you today is the stroke style. Right now, if we zoom in here, the style is basically just a solid line. So we could change different things like the pixels. So the width we can change. So let's say we want to increase that to five pixels. So you see it gets thicker. You can change it back down to one. It's going to get thinner. So we could change the style to be dots, change the style to be dashes. We've got some other options to offset the dashes and the dots. Let's change it back down to zero. We've got option to add markers as well. So we've added an arrow somewhere. So let's see where it put the arrow. There we go. So it's included an arrow there. Let's say I want to add like a little arrow in the middle. You can see there's some little arrows here. Again, this is not working very well, but I'm just trying to demonstrate the other things that you could do. And at the end of it, you could add another arrow here. So there you go. This arrow stuff makes more sense if we're drawing a straight line. Let's say we're just going to draw a straight line here using the Bezier tool here. And now we can play around with those markers. In the beginning, we can put an arrow. In the middle, let's put another arrow facing the other way. Did that even show up? Not really. So let's see. Hmm. So the middle stuff, I'm not really sure how that works. It doesn't really show. But anyway, um, let's add an ending arrow. So as you can see there. There are other options as well that I don't really use, but you could play it around with yourself. You've got the cap, the order, and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just going to go back to my fill here, and let's just explore a few other options. So we've got a linear gradient, which creates a gradient here, and we can actually um, edit this gradient a little bit. So it creates a gradient from fully opaque to fully transparent from one side to the next. So you could change uh, where that starts and stops. And you could also change the direction of that gradient. Let's uh, do, we could do a radial gradient. So that looks like it's going from inside to outside. So, yep, we could increase that. We can move the center, oh, maybe too much there. Just undo, let's see. Another mesh gradient. So these are just different gradient tools that you could test out. Um, it's up to you. Recently, I've done a um, example where I did a just a simple linear gradient, but with a different color. So because I don't want to show the transparency here, and I'm not actually sure how to add a gradient going the other side. So what I ended up doing as a workaround was simply to duplicate this image or duplicate this object. So I'm going to select out. I'm going to select the image here and press Control D to duplicate. So I've got two of these, right? And what I'll do for the other object is I'm actually going to change the fill to just a solid. And let's say I want that to be the secondary color. So let's put it at an orange. But now you can't see the other object because it's below it. So what we can do is reorder this. So I'm going to bring this object one step down or press page down on the keyboard. And it's going to show the one with the transparency on top. So that's how I achieve that gradient effect that you see in one of my other videos. The basics of fill and stroke I've covered pretty much in this video. And hopefully that will help you in your journey with Inkscape. And hopefully you get to do more cool things with what you've learned today. I would appreciate it if you hit subscribe and give this video a like if it helped you. I hope to do more in the future. Until then, see you next time. Bye-bye.